Okay. When a cop accidentally records something shocking. Was it me when I was getting pegged by your mom? Your mom's a freak, chat. Hi, I'm calling in no. Thomas and Dexter Avenue North. I think somebody's dead. So, I believe... Okay, I shouldn't... I should, I should laugh at that. It's just like, yeah, I'm calling. I'm pretty sure someone's dead. Yeah, they're dead. It's going to be car versus ped, <clears throat> and they're doing CPR. I'm sorry, Fire, I don't have more for you, but it just occurred, and I believe the officer's involved. She was oh, whoa, wait, anyway, what? She had limited value. Oh, wait, it's this guy! I've never seen the full video of this guy! Wait, what? I've only seen the clip. I've never seen the full video. <laughs> Were you aware that it was being recorded? No, I was not. When police received disturbing information in reference to a potential overdose, a race to the scene will trigger a sequence of shocking tragedies. On January 23, 2022, at 8 p.m., Seattle police dispatchers receive a call that will set in motion a night of both madness and scandal. It's hard, it's hard to think. Okay, that yeah, happens. So All right, well, just try to, try to relax and think with me. Have you done cocaine before? Yes. Okay. Do you think you've overdosed on it? Wait, the cop? I think so, yes. Okay, so I'm going to get you some help, all right? Okay. So stand by. <sighs> Can I have your name, please? No. Just to, so we know who we're looking for, we're, we're getting some assistance to you as quick as we can right now. You, you can call me Alex. Alex, did you want to give your last name? No, I'm okay. I'm kind of freaking out right now. First responders and a medic team are quickly dispatched oh, it's to not, Alex's it's not location, the cop. Okay. 6th Street North, downtown. First en route is Officer Kevin Dave, who speeds into action in his single officer cruiser. A fire and medical team prepare to meet him on 6th Street. Officer Dave swerves his police SUV through downtown traffic, flashing his lights and blasting his siren to warn oncoming traffic and pedestrians. In overdose cases, every moment counts. He's approaching the intersection of Dexter Street and Thomas Street, a two-lane road with a bike lane and a construction site obscuring a portion of the sidewalk from view. Officer Dave speeds through this 25-mile-per-hour zone when the catastrophic happens. Some of the following footage has been redacted out of respect for the victim. to start a supervisor, start fire for a struck pedestrian. Off screen, Officer Dave quickly jumps out of his vehicle and dashes out into Dexter Street. Moments later, we hear the unmistakable the sounds fuck? of emergency CPR. Tragically, a pedestrian had been struck. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh my nine. God. Despite Dave's persistent CPR, the pedestrian remains unresponsive. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I don't think anyone's surviving that shit. Three, four, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight. Seven, you all right? No, I'm not all right. Dave soon notifies dispatch and a squadron of police. You know, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're going through a lot right police now. Police cruisers man. and ambulances descend on the because I don't think later it seems like you give a shit scene to assist. So someone's doing CPR, Dexter, North, and Thomas. I'm sorry, Fire. I don't have more for you, but it just occurred, and I believe the officer's involved. So the officer may be involved. Yeah, the officer's not hurt, there. though. By now, Alex has been given proper medical assistance, and all attention has shifted to the tragedy unfolding in downtown Seattle. Dispatchers are now receiving calls from eyewitnesses. Wait, did Alex survive? Is Alex dead? ...who will prove a crucial role in the investigation that will come later. Was it like a yeah. vehicle hit a pedestrian? What happened? Oh, was there no sirens? There were sirens. Correct. They're doing a CPR right now. The person was crossing the road, and um, I think police were coming, going fast, so they hit them. Uh, yeah, bro, bro was flying down the road. I mean, I know it's officer and like people should pay attention to the sirens and shit, but damn. Not sure if there's anything I need to do. There's another, there's, there's two police officers here. And I think there's another one coming right now. Officer Dave's colleagues comfort him as he describes what went yeah, down. Yeah, he was going insanely, especially for like a very, very crowded area like that. I don't know. The crosswalk. Slammed on my brakes. Instead of staying back where she should before crossing. 
Hvad er det? You guys are gonna regret giving him hugs after the shit he's gonna say. The same cannot be said for the young woman lying unresponsive in the street. A 23-year-old grad student, despite medic's best attempts, oh, she passes away after being transported to the hospital. Yeah, D Dave, you okay? Physically? No Any medical issues. No medical issues. I'm not going to ask any questions, but just, I just don't want you to know that I'm here for you. That we're going to get you everything that we that you need, okay? Okay? Thanks, LT. All right, man. While the true intentions behind the officer's assertion that he won't ask questions is unknown, it's possible he's trying to protect Officer Dave. Clearly, body yep. cameras are rolling and documenting the conversation. There are also labor and department policies involved in these types of situations. Some agencies won't allow a responding officer to question an involved officer and require an internal group or external law enforcement agency to do so. One important purpose of this type of policy is to maintain impartiality. Many police are represented by unions, and it's possible that it could be against union rules for officers to question each other without the presence of a union representative, counsel, or both. As stated, the specifics of this particular incident are unknown, and these are a few of the potential reasons the officer has stated that he won't question Officer Dave. Photos of the aftermath were taken, and evidence was tagged and inventoried. Officer Dave's cruiser, a Ford Police Interceptor, had sustained heavy My damage God. to its front push bar, passenger side headlights, and minor cracks to its front windshield. Debris was scattered. So was he upset about his, his vehicle more than anything the else? cold Seattle pavement. Two AirPods were found, presumably ejected from the pedestrian Oh no, she zero. had AirPods in! That explains it all! Oh no. We're going back to the meme chat. She had the AirPods in. She couldn't hear him. At the moment of contact. Body cam footage from Officer Dave's cruiser was inventoried and sent to the police archive to be reviewed during a pending internal investigation. Another police body cam would later elevate this freak accident to the level of international scandal. <clears throat> Several witnesses later told what they saw from where they stood on the sidewalk that fateful night. Um, I was trailing behind them. We changed sides of the street to avoid a construction zone. They were ahead of me. They were crossing the street. We heard a siren. I heard a siren. I would presume the pedestrian also heard a siren. I observed them beginning to run, presumably to exit the roadway as they heard a siren approaching. And then I heard a loud thump. And I observed the police officer come to a halt. I was not far behind them, so I was coming into view of wow. Dexter Street. It was very quick. You saw the collision. What happened after that? So that person kind of got kicked by the car into the air and they flew in the air about wow. 10, 10 meters in the northbound direction. Certain factors were suspected to have contributed to the deadly collision. A construction site leading up the east of Dexter Street significantly obscured driver vision and a partly see-through metal... Like, I'm just going to say it. In context of like the construction and what road he was driving on, I think the cop is going too too fast. Like I, I'm just gonna say it. I mean, regardless of whether or not this dude's a piece of shit, because he is a giant piece of shit, and I can just go deep in and just say, "Fuck you, you're a piece of shit. It's your fault, no matter what." But regardless, even if it's good cop, bad cop, he definitely was going too fast for that area. A construction area with bad vision. There was there was a uh, a, a stoplight right in front of him. Didn't slow down, sped up to like 60. Like, nah, he was going too fast. Chain fence led out to the edge of the road. <clears throat> Orange construction barricades also partially obstructed view of the intersection from afar. The pedestrian was evidently already walking outside the crosswalk when Officer Dave began to approach in his cruiser. She was possibly wearing AirPods that could have made hearing police sirens difficult. See, I told you. Later analysis of the footage revealed that Officer Dave had performed proper collision avoidance, braking, and emergency steering to the center of the street. He'd initiated his siren appropriately moments before the collision. 
Unfortunately, the Ford Cruiser was too powerful to be slowed by a short period of braking, and the steering didn't effectively change the direction. Officer Dave is sent to the West Precinct and is met by Officer Daniel Otterer from the DUI squad, whose duties include investigating drivers for signs of impairment. It's protocol to have drivers evaluated in serious injury or fatality collisions. After completing his testing of... God, he looks like such a tool. Officer Dave, Officer Otterer, concludes that Dave has exhibited no signs of impairment and is safe to operate a motor vehicle. Weeks later, police archivists were routinely going over body cam footage to prepare for internal review and analysis. In the process, they stumbled on a potentially problematic piece of audio captured by Officer Otterer's body cam, immediately following his session with Officer Dave. The body cam had recorded Officer Otterer's side of a phone conversation with Mike Solon, the president of the Seattle Police Officers Guild. Yep, totally. The president? All right, brother. Well, uh, yep. Um, I'm sure uh, TCIS is. And I, uh, oh, he's good. He says, well, normally we don't give voluntary statements. And I said, hey, you're going to have to decide <clears throat> if you wanted to give a statement or not. But it does not seem like there's a criminal investigation going on. Yeah. I mean, he's going 50. That's not out of control. That's not reckless for a trained driver. Yeah, lights and sirens. Yeah, well, there's some. The, initially, uh, he said she was in a crosswalk. Okay, never mind. I thought this was the 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 clip of him saying shit, but this is a different crosswalk. Uh, there's a witness that says no, she wasn't. Unfortunately, witness statements aren't always reliable. Clearly, the victim was in the crosswalk at the time of impact. But that witness could be different because I don't think she was thrown 40 feet either. I think she went up on the hood, hit the windshield. Then when he hit the brakes, flew off the car. But she. Why are you arguing whether or not she was thrown 40 feet? She is dead. <laughs> oh, it is the clip. Why? Why are you laughing? No, it's a regular person. Wait, this is with the president. He's laughing with the president, by the way. Yeah, I did not know that. Just write a check. Yeah. <laughs> $11,000. She was 26 anyway. She had limited value. Apparently, Daniel was unaware that his body cam was still recording. Through extensive police analysis, it was determined that Officer Dave had been going upwards of 70 miles. Yeah, I told you. That was definitely not 50. Definitely not 50. Per hour. And that the pedestrian had been flung nearly 140. Oh, my God. So it wasn't the guy driving that said it? I, I'm kind of confused on that. Was it? Let me go back here. I'm, let me go back to the beginning of this. So it wasn't exhibited no signs of impairment and is safe to operate. So was I being an asshole shit talking Dave? Operate a motor vehicle. Weeks later, police archivists were routinely going over body cam footage to prepare for internal review and analysis. In the process, they stumbled on a potentially problematic piece. I thought it was a dude who actually killed the person. Audio captured by Officer Otterer's body cam immediately following his session with Officer Dave. The body cam had recorded Officer Otterer's side of a. Ah, okay. You know what, Dave? I'm sorry, man. I apologize. I apologize for uh, shit talking you and saying you're a terrible person. Still, we're speeding. Still, we're going way too fast in that area. Just saying. But fuck this guy. I thought Dave was this guy. I was wrong. Phone call. Yes, is that witness? Thousand. <coughs> Light, allegedly by a leak to the media, and complaints from outraged citizens began pouring in. It turns out that Daniel Otterer's duties went beyond those of the DUI force. He also served as vice president for the Seattle Police Officers Guild. Wow. With pressure mounting, the Police Officers Guild issued a press release addressing the alleged misconduct. In it, they claimed that Officer Otterer's comments had been taken out of context. How do you take that out of context? How do you take, she's 26, she had limited value, and take that out of context? There's no context that makes that okay. There's zero context that would make that okay. No matter what you do, what are you fucking talking about? Within days, the Office of Police Accountability had received a complaint that alleged Officer Otterer had violated department policy. Officer Otterer initially requested a rapid adjudication, a mechanism of the police bureaucracy that would waive a full investigation in exchange for minor discipline. Oh my God, what a 
bitch. But dude. his request was denied. Good. Officer Otterer and Union President Solon were both promptly brought in to give official statements. They were interviewed by Sergeant Corey George of Seattle's Office of Police <clears throat> Accountability, a police task force that works to ensure professionalism and safeguard against unethical or inappropriate police behavior. Your uh, body worn video captured a conversation between yourself and Officer Solon. Can you explain the content and context of the phone call? I was, yeah, let's I was see. Finished. Let's see what makes it better. Home. And we were talking about, because I had very limited information on, on scene. So I was telling what I kind of knew at the time, and those details always change during the course of an investigation. Mike was, or Officer Solon, was talking about what, what could anybody do? What can anybody say about this? And, and that was kind of the context of the conversation. I remember in, earlier in the conversation where we spoke about, uh, boy, it never stops. It's always something happening. We were talking about that. And then this uh, was a conversation about maybe things we knew at the time, and then this is awful. What can attorneys possibly say about that? And that was the end of the conversation. Were you aware that it was being recorded? No, I was not. What about the limited value comment? Uh, it was been alleged that you violated uh, SPD policy manual section 5.001, standards and duties, subsection 10, employees shall strive to be professional. What is your understanding of this policy section? I understand it very well. You don't want to do anything that could potentially diminish trust in the police department, uh, cast doubt on uh, an investigation, or cause a problem where the police department might have to explain something. Uh, do you believe that you violated this policy? I did not violate that policy. It was a private conversation in a car alone. There in a police uniform about a police thing, about, about a case with police involved in a police car while you're wearing your police uniform with the president of the police guild. Personal conversation personal conversation that just happened to be recorded by my camera turning on probably when I made a U-turn or another car could have simply passed by. Next came Mike Solon, Daniel's boss and good friend. At one point, Officer Otterer says she's dead and begins laughing shortly thereafter. Do you recall what you said to Officer Otterer to make him laugh? I remarked on how he commented on how fast the officer was traveling and how she unfortunately was struck by the police vehicle and how that she hit the windshield of the vehicle and i was remarking that she was more than likely dead instantly which was a tragedy why are you laughing and i said that the city is going to have to pay out a lot of money on this one and that was the context of the conversation does that where's the funny part where's the funny part at one point officer Otter i'm not laughing just write a check then he laughs for a few seconds and says $11,000, she was 26 anyways, she had limited value. Do you recall what you stated to Officer Otterer to have him elicit that response? Well, there was remarking on how the city is going to have to pay out a ton of money to the family in this tragic yep. situation. And, and how can the city, lawyers in general, speaking and negotiating on the city's behalf with the family? How do you put a price tag on human life? And that was the crux of the conversation. Okay. So Th that makes it better? So you don't believe that any of the laughing was making light of the situation or laughing at the fact that somebody had, had died? I think without context, just hearing the audio. But everyone has all of the context. We have the whole body cam footage. We got all of it. I heard everything with, with context. Nothing was, nothing was made better. Which was nope. unfortunately captured in a private phone call. You could have that as a reasonable takeaway. Police officers, we deal with tragedy almost on a daily basis. And we're human beings just like the next person. But we have to process these in a manner that allows us to go to that next tragic event. And humor and sarcasm is used for us as a, a coping mechanism. In response to the wow. events, the Seattle Police Department what a shit cop out. announced on September 28th, what a cop cop out, 2023, that Officer Daniel Otterer would be reassigned to a non-operational position. Good. Records show that over his 12 years on the police force, he had been investigated dozens of times for various oh. incidents. Oh, really? The victim, Janavi Kandula, was 23 years old oh, and really? a graduate student when she met her tragic death on Dexter Street. In September. Yeah, exactly. Get better coping mechanisms. Like, I don't get it. So you're saying that you're allowed to mock someone dying because it's a coping mechanism for you.
That, that, no, that's not how it works, bro. I'm sorry, especially if you're a fucking cop. 2023, Northeastern University in Washington elected. There's a difference between nervous laugh and just busting out laugh. Yeah, that, w that was a hilarious laugh. That was like, oh my God, that's so funny that she died, right? That was not a, uh, she died. <laughs> you know, it wasn't anything like to that. To award their mourned student a posthumous degree. The King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office is currently conducting a criminal review of the crash. Yeah, that was a belly laugh. That was a full-on, full guttural laugh right there, man. Wow. 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 That was awful. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.